Greetings, you with Tanisha Ali, and I am doing another unboxing today. And stick around, I have two more great decks on the way. I have the Melanated Rider Weight deck. Did you know that the original Rider Weight deck was actually designed by a woman of African descent? She was biracial, but due to the times, she had to design a deck that did not represent her own self. And so there is a Rider Weight Melanated deck. I am so excited to see and then i also the afro goddess deck which i've talked about a few times i did go ahead and bite the bullet and purchase the matching oracle deck so i cannot wait now this is new to me but i've always been into herbs and essential oils and natural healing and i happened to stumble upon this in books a million about a week ago and i was really taken by it so I wanted to pull a card from this for you. It comes with a hardcover book, which is really unusual. It's a beautiful book. And then it comes with this beautiful satin bag for the cards. All right. And these are the cards and they're beautiful. And these are healing messages about how to use specific herbs and nature's bounty for healing. And so, for example, valerian root. Um, just going to talk about this for a second. I used to use valerian root, passion flower, and kava kava. Kava kava less so because it can affect the liver. But years ago when I was dealing with a lot of anxiety and insomnia, and this is post, I guess you could say I've been sober now since 2014, I think April the 4th. Um, yeah, and so when I say sober, I mean found myself moving into a greater sense of peace. Um, I used to be uh, marred or I don't want to say, I, I used to have a difficult time with insomnia and anxiety. I was extremely high strung and I still am, but not in the same way. So it took me really a change of life and in really embracing some of the uh, modalities that I'm in now or some of the things I used to heal myself. I have probably... Um, had every pharmaceutical under the sun. Pharmaceuticals don't work well for me. I couldn't get anything to help me to sleep, regardless of what the prescription was. I, I can't even explain, but I've had some pretty crazy experiences with a couple of two or three uh, pharmaceuticals. Couldn't last longer than two to three weeks. Um, began looking for other things that were really helpful. And valerian was something that was very good to help me to relax and to help me to 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 rest uh, better at e in the evening. Now, there were times where um, I would have to combine this with passion flower and sometimes even kava kava. My, I don't know what was going on. I was very resistant and I was very out of alignment. But it gives you the herb on, on a page in the book. And it says, it gives you a little story, okay? And there's a matching card. Now, this is not the card that goes with it, but there's a matching card and there's a message. Valerian stands tall in the garden, her stem stiff to compensate for a hollow core, but don't let her upright stance fool you. Valerian dreams of being a cat. In her efforts to become more mammalian, she's evolved an animal-like oil that acts as perfume to those with feline proclivities while smelling like sweaty gym socks to the rest of us. Yeah, Valerian is not really a pleasant smelling herb. Why a cat, you ask? Valerian's been watching felines and has come to the gleeful conclusion that cats are rather shameless and more content because of it. She asks you to, to aspire to a life free of self-flagellation and daily denigrations. Okay, so don't denigrate yourself. Valerian begs you to relax your armored body, your stiff thoughts, and your rigid emotions, and then join her for a shameless afternoon nap. Now, it's funny they talk about rigid emotions. You know, rigidity within the body is um, reflected in the joints. And I've had my share of joint issues, and they do, I know, come about as a result of my need in years past to try to control everything. I didn't know anything about the flow. Flow? What flow? What do you mean, uh, relax? What are you talking about? Sit down. We don't have time to sit down. We got dishes to wash, bags to pack, um, proposals to write, things to do, people to see, places to go. What are you talking about? Sitting down. I'm not sitting down. I'm going out here and getting what's mine. That was my mindset. 
So I seldom rest it well. And when I say rest it well, I would have periods of extreme insomnia um, that would last for days and weeks. And when I say in extreme, I mean not able to nap, not able to sleep. But I was so high strung that um, I would continue to push and push and push and push. And I feel that I pay for some of that now. And with all of the energy work that I do, I should be showing you all these. I'm so sorry. What am I thinking? I'm looking for the Valerian root card. Aren't these amazing? Look at these cards. They are beautiful. What needs mending? This is comfy, comfortable. Okay, elderberry. Okay, we have um, vervain, burdock, white willow, muleen. I think this is pronounced. This is really good for um, asthma. It's also good, I think, maybe for the urinary tract. I forget. Time. But um, oats. The uh, all of us know about St. John's wort, but this is um, sleeplessness, not able to take a nap, and all of that. So, valerian root was one of my best friends during those years. You can get it in tea, you can get it in the tincture drops. Uh, most of the time, I would take it in the capsules. And then we have white sage, you all are familiar with this because we use this for smudging. And clear the way. Forbidden fruit, apple, <clears throat> sweet violet. And then we have rosemary for remembrance. For those of you who have those herb gardens, you might really like, look at that lavender one. You might really like this, this deck. It's really beautiful. Rose, resurrection. Starflower, Daisy, Rishi. Don't they use this for, uh, well, ain't that a feminine energy one? I'm not sure. Chickweed, very good. Cleanser. Passion flower, the one I was mentioning for um, relaxation as well. If you have, you know, anxiety issues, here's Valerian. Okay, and it says uh, release rigidity. So as I was mentioning, those people who deal with joint issues usually has a lot to do with, think about joints, right? Rigidity. So our energetic imbalances manifest emotionally and psychologically in our bodies. And for example, asthma issues have to do with grief, um, frustration and trying to dominate things and and being overbearing and controlling also can manifest as liver problems. But um, yeah, the cards are, are amazing. So that's the Valerian root card. You see the little kitty asleep. And then we have the raspberry, which is excellent for stabilizing the cycle and the feminine system. Quicker aspen, mugwort, very good for dream work. If you need to be dreaming, in fact, I need to find me a good supply of mud work. I'm ready to start working with my dreams a little bit more. Um, trillium and last but not least yarrow so this is the book again comes in this really cool box okay very nice little deck I mean really nice and so each page is very different it has a quote on it then it may have a question on it this is the mugwort page here. Uh, mugwort lives in the space between deep rest and waking. She's the daughter of moonlight and protector of those who travel to dream time. Mugwort curls around your mind, whispering your dreams into words and images that you can clutch as you climb levels of consciousness and return to your waking self. While mugwort's constant vigil makes her a bit waspish and bitter, she knows the many layered worlds and can guide you through the serpentine paths of collective unconscious. Call on her to guide you through the dreams or journey work. If Mugwort appears to you, she's calling you to dip into those subtler realms. So yeah, they have a ritual here. So I must have missed the page when I was doing the Valerian. I skipped over it. Apparently each of these 
Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. This is at the, be at the end. I'm so sorry. So each herb gets a introduction. And then you also get a ritual and a reflection. Oh, man. If y'all didn't stick around to the end of the video, you might have missed this. But I do want to see what um, the suggestion is for Valerian. Because at Valerian, I got to tell you, it was a touchstone for me for so long. So re releasing um, rigidity. Let's take a look at that. And let's just take a look what it, what it says. It looks like it's almost just a couple pages before. Um... Okay, so we have rest. And then we have exploring shame. Ooh. I guess you could say that has something to do with why I wasn't sleeping. Shame is a feeling you get when you behave in a way that's antithetical to your ideals. We've all experienced big shames, necessary learning moments that allow us to fine tune our moral compass. I got to tell you, I resonate with that. But when we allow our thinking to become overly rigid or self-righteous, we create a million corrosive small shames. Think about when you last felt ashamed. What a deal did you quite, what ideal did you quite not live up to? Looking back, was your shame Attached to unnecessarily rigid thinking? Is there a way to be kinder while still being true to yourself? Shame is the dream killer. They use one of my words. Dream killer, but they separated it. Shame is the dream killer. I'm talking about dream killing people. Because shame or the possibility of shame amplifies our fear of fear. Keep us Keeps us from, I can't read today. What the hell? Keeps us from contributing and short circuits our willingness to explore. So the rest um, is about an afternoon nap, finding a sunny spot, curling up for 10 to 20 minutes, which is the ideal time for napping because it allows your body to deeply relax without your mind dropping into REM sleep. So I wonder how many people can sit down or lie down and in 10 to 20 minutes take a nap and get back up and feel refreshed. I've never been able to do that. Um, researchers found that when we're left to our own devices, humans do a big sleep at night and a second shorter sleep in the afternoon. So not napping is actually unnatural. Actually, in a lot of um, uh, other countries, for example, Somalia and many Arab countries, everything closes down at noon and people go home the kids go home from school and eat at home where their mommies are usually home and people go home the shops close they take a nap they eat lunch and then they go back to work i mean can you imagine whereas here we are enslaved and people go home for lunch for two hours and come back what work four days a week huh closed on um fridays what that's a this is an American thing, this enslavement piece. So not napping is actually unnatural. You are hardwired for afternoon siestas. If you know you're going to have a late night, preemptive napping up to two hours is the way to go. As with all things, one size does not fit all. Some people are just simply not good nappers. Know your own body. You're with Tanisha Ali, a butterfly transformations connecting you to the vision of who you truly are. Take a look at this deck if you are interested in it and you found it to be inspirational. Again, it is called the Illustrated Herbiary Collectible Box Set Guidance and Rituals from 36 Bewitching Botanicals. Botanicals. Enjoy this deck. It's beautiful. I plan on using it more to help me learn more about herbs and things in a very fun way. Have a great afternoon. Bye.